Are you bad at low light photography? I often read that people feel they are bad at low light photography or they have to practice low light photography. But can you be bad at low light photography? I'm Wolf Amri and in this video I will lift the ISO myth. You surely have realized that when shooting in not all that great lighting conditions, you may get noise in your images. The reason for that is in 99.99999% a high ISO. And that creates noise. But does that mean you can be bad at low light photography? Let's first have a quick look at ISO. ISO is the gain that you can apply, you don't have to, when the available light is rather low. In fact, your camera then brightens the image. And that's actually kind of image editing because it happens after the image is already taken. The downside is every gain that is applied to anything doesn't necessarily make things better. Compare that to a megaphone. The megaphone applies the gain to my voice, but it doesn't only make it louder, but also kind of degrades it. In the case of the megaphone, it distorts the voice. In case of our images, ISO introduces noise and some other unwanted effects. If that was new to you, let me link you to our ISO lesson that will help you understand at the end of this video. So far so good, but does that mean you can be bad at low light photography? Let's find out. I'm here in the countryside and my dear wife Birgit will be horse riding for us. To freeze the motion, I need a fast shutter speed. I will use my 85mm f1.8 lens at the lowest aperture number to get as much light into the camera as possible. That has the nice side effect of a beautifully blurred background. By the way, if you're interested in the 5 factors of background blur, I will set up a link at the end of the video so that you can smoothly continue watching. Okay, back to our horse riding shot. I want a minimum shutter speed of 1 1600th of a second to freeze the motion. And I want the ISO as low as possible. If I set that, I see that my image is even overexposed. So I can choose an even faster shutter speed without worrying about ISO noise. Let's take a few images. The images are super crisp, sharp, and literally noise free, even if I zoom in quite a bit. But what if the light gets low? We have stayed until after sunset. While I don't even have the feeling that it is much darker yet, my camera is already having issues. If I keep all the camera settings from our previous series and take an image, I get a pitch dark shot. So I need to adjust my settings. Can I lower the shutter speed below the needed 1 1600th of a second? No, because I don't want to introduce motion blur. Can you use a bigger aperture? No, because the aperture is already at the maximum opening. So raising ISO is our only choice. I'll set my ISO to 1600 and take a few shots. Okay, there is quite some noise. I say it often, but let me repeat it in this video too. You may not see that at all if you're watching on a smartphone or tablet, but trust me, it is very noticeable on a bigger monitor. If you're shooting mainly for Instagram, that is an impeccable image. But if you zoom in quite a bit, you will clearly see the noise. But that was shot with a professional full frame camera and an 85 mm prime lens at f1.8. What if I tried the same with an entry-level Canon T7 and a cheap kit lens at f5.6? To get the same shutter speed, I need to raise the ISO by three stops. So from ISO 1600 to ISO 12800. But the camera doesn't even support ISO 12800. So let's set it to ISO 6400 and take a test shot. Not only is the image underexposed, it shows a massive amount of image noise. Compare that to the result we got before. I would say you can't really compare that. The difference is mind-blowing. So the answer to the question, are you bad at low light photography, is twofold. First, in low light, when you need certain shutter speeds, you have no other choice than raising ISO. 
and low light can be outdoors when it is heavily overcast at the end of the day, like in this case, or indoors. So very often when you photograph sports or running kids. And even if you don't need that high shutter speed, the darker it gets, the more you have to raise ISO. Unless you have a still life or anything that doesn't move. Then you can put the camera on the tripod to avoid camera shake and expose for many seconds and still keep the ISO at 100. So that has nothing to do with you being bad. It's the way how things are. Nothing you can do about it. And the second part of the answer to the question, are you bad at low light photography is the equipment can be better or worse. And that applies to the camera and the lens. But that doesn't have to do anything with you. If you see images of professional photographers and you think they are just great, first ask yourself, maybe they only look that crisp on my smartphone. And if I did look at them on a bigger monitor in full resolution, they might be just as bad. And second, what equipment did the photographer use? For example, for this image here, I was lit by sparklers only. I shot this at ISO 8000. That is already pretty high, but first I have a professional camera. And second, I have used f1.4. Shooting this with the Canon T7 and the kit lens would have been impossible. I would have needed ISO 128000, which is far higher than the camera supports. And even if it did, the camera performing subpar at higher ISO levels would have created a completely useless piece of... I better stop here. See you in the next video.